So, uh, we want to take a slice collection with some slices in it and be able to select them with the keyboard like a cur uh, keyboard cursor like a menu. Um, so I'm going to do a demonstration of how to do that. Okay, so first I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a little empty test file. Create a new game and we'll call this um, slice menu example. Slice underscore menu underscore example. <laughs> I can type that. Sample. Okay. Now, um, before I make the slice collection, I just want some placeholder graphics. Um, so I'm going to go over to the free sprites collection and get some nice uh, enemy sprites. Here, let's see. As, uh, okay, I want to go into, uh, okay, where am I? Dropbox. No, bear with me. Source, HRPGCE, let's make uh, import TMP. Now let's get this squid. Save. Uh, let's get that burning skull. Uh, oh, nice. Lovely little goblin. Uh, save as. Oh, I like that ghost. Okay, some of them are pings, some of them are bitmaps. We don't care anymore, that's okay. Okay, uh, I think those were small enemy graphics. Import, import temp. Oh, it does not want to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, we got our ghost. Hello, ghost. Uh, let's see. Let's overwrite an unused palette. Add a new one. Uh, import. Add skull. I really need, there, there should be another menu item here that says first empty palette or something like that. That's totally a thing I should do. Okay, uh, let's try save images. And save image as. Uh, oh, I forgot, oh, goblin? Did I get a goblin? Got a goblin. Okay, I wanted five. Import from goblin. First empty palette. Import. There's a flying pig. Right. Import. Now we got a cute little squid. First empty palette. Okay, so we got some sprites. Now we're going to go into slice collections. We'll just use slice collection number zero because why not? Uh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm not going to bother. Just going to go down here and I'm going to 
plus, and I'm going to add a rectangle. This is going to be the container that has the selectable things in it. Let's give it, let's just put it someplace on the screen. Give it some nice size. I'm not going to be too picky. And let's make it visible. Um, background color. <laughs> this palette. This old palette. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to put a sprite inside it. going to be of type small enemy. Let's put it right about there. Copy paste. I'm going to move it over. Now in this, I'm going to I'm going to zigzag them just a little bit. Uh, in this example, we're only going to care about what order they they appear in the uh, the list of uh, the list of children of this rectangle. That's the order in which we're going to select them from left, left to right. There are other ways we could do that. We could actually check their pixel positions, but uh, I want to keep this simple. Okay, that one is the skull. This one is my friend the goblin. Um, okay. Paste. This one's the flying pig. And copy paste. This one is the squiddly doodle. Okay. Now up. Here, I'm going to go ahead and create one other rectangle. I'm actually going to move it down, move it. I'm holding shift, pushing down. Like, oh, right. <laughs> I had the wrong one selected. OK, that's the new one I just added. I want to move it down so that it'll be drawn in front of the others. Uh, let's make it, let's give it a fixed size. Sorry, fixed size, not position. 40, 40. Uh, let's give it a border style. The border is going to be a line. The line color will be white. The Translucency, we're going to change to blend. Let's make it a nice, um, let's make it 25% blend. And actually, I think I'm going to blend towards, instead of blending towards black, we're going to have it blend towards bluish white, like bright blue. Okay. All right, this is going to be our selection cursor. We can make it look however we want, and it's going to move over them as we select. But right now, it doesn't matter where we put it. It doesn't matter at all. I'm just going to put it in a terrible spot just to drive that point home. It doesn't matter where it is. But this, this layout's what matters the most. we got the rectangle with five children, and we'll select them from zero to four. And we've got this rectangle, which is our, our cursor, which will animate and move around. Okay, we got to get some lookup codes on this. Lookup code. All right, and we're going to call this one um, choice holder. Uh, in, your, in an actual game, we might be able to come up with a more <laughs> a more specific, more descriptive name, but uh, that works. That works for me. Okay, so that rectangle is the choice holder. This rectangle is the cursor. Okay, I think that's all we need. Um, all right, I'm going to open up a new file. Uh, 
me save as source hrpcgce with a bunch of junk in here. We'll put some more junk in here. Um, I, forgot what, I forgot what I called the RPG file. Did I give it a good name? Slice menu example. That's what I called it. So I'm going to call this slice menu example dot rpg no dot <laughs> dot hss okay and i'm using a text editor that doesn't uh have hamster speak support but i just uh okay so yeah that doesn't matter that's neither here nor there um script oh, sorry Plot script. Um, choose a thing. Begin. End. Okay. Just to show that it's running. Show. Show string. String zero equals. The script is. Running. <laughs> That'll do. Little sanity check to make sure it runs. Okay, let's let's make this triggerable. Um, all right, we got basically nothing here. Local NPC. We've got one local NPC, and our local NPC is going to trigger the script for us. So I'm going to run. I'm going to compile our extremely minimal script here. Make sure I did actually save that. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to go F9 to jump to the global options, re-import scripts, uh, and oh, there it is, slice menu example. Okay, I've imported it. So when we activate this NPC, we're going to run the script Choose a thing. Okay. Save my changes. I'm going to test. No title screen. Oh, I forgot to put the NPC on the map. Um, place NPCs. Boop. Did I make it look exactly the same as the hero? Yes, I did. Let's make it look different than the hero. Uh, picture. We'll do the purple one. OK. Test game. Oh, it's already running. Our NPC didn't reload. That's OK. Script is running. OK, so we can we can trigger our script now. That's all I wanted to make sure we could do at that point. OK, so choose a thing. Um, I'm going to keep this a little organized. Let's see. Set up, choose a thing. Clean up, choose a thing. Script. Set up, choose a thing, begin, end. Um, set up, set up with no space. Clean up. Okay. Clean up with a space, set up without a space. Uh, you need something, pumpkin? Uh, one moment. Hold on, let me pause this. OK, I'm back. Uh, let's see. Is this playing player? Obviously, if we're hitting the arrow keys to move a menu selection around, we don't really want the the player to be walking around also. And I'm sure we'll need to do other things there also. Actually, I think we're going to make this 
set up thing load the um, the collection. The slice collection, for lack of a better word, I'll call it col for collection, which is a thing. Uh, exit load slice collection. Is that the right? I always second guess myself when I'm trying to remember the names of commands. Load slice collection. Yep, that's it. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba, load slice collection. We made it in collection zero, so that's the one we're going to load. And then we're also going to pass it as an argument to the cleanup. its children. Okay, that's fine for now. Um, okay, so now we need some more variables and handles. I, I tend to define my variables close to where I'm using them. Really, variables get hoisted, which means that no matter where you put it in the script, it always acts as if it was defined up at the top. Uh, but just I think it's a little more readable if we keep it closer to where it's defined. OK, and we need, um, let me go back here and look at, look at our collection. We have a choice holder and a cursor. OK, choice holder. Uh, cursor. Choice. Just a moment. Okay, look up slice. SLI colon choice holder. So that's the lookup code that we created. And we're going to look it up only considering children of the collection. So we don't want all the other slices that are all over the whole game. Um, and then we want cursor. Dad. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. All right, and the cursor is also a lookup slice command. We're gonna look up cursor. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. Um, so we've got these. Um, OK, now we have another variable. And we're just going to call it slice. And this is going to represent the one that we currently have selected. Um, and we're going to set it equal to the first child of the choice holder. Now, I don't want to keep typing choice every time. I'm just going to call it holder. That's perfectly fine. Holder, holder. OK, so the slice that we have currently selected is the first child of the holder. OK, now we need a loop while true. OK, so this is an endless loop endless loop, you need a way to exit it, and you need uh, a, at least one wait command of some kind. Uh, right at the end, I'm going to put a wait one. And we're going to say if we press escape, if p press uh, cancel key, if we press whatever the cancel key is, um, then we'll break out of the loop. <clears throat> okay. 
All right, this is far enough that we can do a very minimal test. I'm going to press F9, reimport scripts. Oh, haha. Okay, choice holder. I short. I shortened the name of my variable. I did not shorten the name of my lookup code. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. F9 reimport. F9 test game. All right, I should get you closer. Okay, so we loaded our thing. It doesn't do anything yet, but we loaded it. And if we press escape, it uh, if we press escape, it closes, although it brings up the menu to it. I think there's a way to. Uh, if we just do here, wait. Uh, while. Um, key is pressed. Cancel. Okay, that'll wait until we've released the cancel key before it actually finishes the cleanup, and then we won't get our won't get the menu popping popping up. Hmm. Okay. So now inside this loop, we have an area for input, and we have an area for update. We could split those out into separate scripts if we want to. I don't know if I'm going to do that for this example, but we could. Um, update. Okay. So we're going to say um, see. Oh, actually, I think we're going to use a variable for tracking when an update needs to happen. Need update. Okay. And need update is true. So the first loop, the first time we loop through this, we do want an update. So if need update, then and we're gonna say move slice to screen pause. This is a new command. You'll need nightlies for this. Um, you can do the same thing with move slice to and doing the calculation yourself to figure out where, uh, where it belongs on the screen. Um, but I realized why make, what, why should you have to calculate the screen position on your own when I could just add a new command that lets you move the slice specifically to a, a position on the screen as opposed to a position relative to the parent. So that's going to make our lives a little easier. We have to do a little bit less, less math. Um, cursor. Okay, and then it's going to go to slice screen x s l slice screen y s l. Okay. And we're going to have it move there over the course of, um, I wanted to take maybe a, a third of a second to get there. Uh, you, we could, here's a thing that I like to do. My frame rate is, cur the default frame rate is about 18 frames per second. We could change that though. Uh, I'm not going to in this example, but you might want to have a higher frame rate. Uh, higher frame rates are nice. You don't want to look like you are running uh, MS-DOS 6.22. Uh, second. Okay. So the number of ticks per second is about 18. Pretty close. So I'm just going to go second divided by three. Okay. So about a third of a second is how long it's going to take that to get there. OK, I'm going to go ahead and run it again now, actually. Uh, 
<coughs> reimport. Let's see, did I get my scripts reimported? Maybe. Yeah, I did. Okay. So the cursor jumped to the right place uh, to start with. Maybe a little slower than we want, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to have the loop that uh, actually checks for the input. Now we're going to say, oh, um, loop is the wrong word because we're already in a loop. <laughs> okay, if um, P press, I think we can just say right key. Pretty sure that works. Right key. The reason I'm using um, the reason I'm using these constants, yeah, up key, down key, left key, right key. The, the, these content con contents are nice. Uh, these constants are nice because rather than like specifically checking for like the enter key or the space bar or the control key or the you know, or, or, or checking like for the right key on the arrow on the number pad or the right key arrow key um, or the game pad control pad that's a that's a bunch of stuff that you used to have to do and you don't have to do it anymore you can just check for these constants and it'll give you the same the same stuff as the generic OHRPGC e controls give you plus it'll work with your game pad uh, okay, anyway, so if there's a key press of the right key, then we do some stuff. Um, then we'll say else if there's a key press of the left key. I went to check. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> If you hold them both at the same time, this logic means that the right key will take priority. Uh, you might want to have some uh, some tie breaking logic. Uh, maybe have nothing happen if both of them are pressed at the same time, but I'm not going to try to do that right now. Okay. So if we press the right key, we're going to say slice equals next sibling slice. Okay, so it will be the this variable will now point to the next one in the list of children. It's previous sibling of slice. Now, of course, something something bad will happen here. If it gets to the last one and it tries to go to the next, there's nothing there, so it gets back a zero which would cause problems later. We don't want to have a zero because uh, a, uh, yeah, the, then the other commands won't work on it. So we're going to say if slice equals zero, actually, sometimes I like to use none. None is just another word for zero. They're going to evaluate to the same thing. If slice is none, then s, I'm just going to make it wrap back to the beginning. We could do that, or uh, we could just have it stay at the last, uh, the last cursor, if we, uh, at the last one, and not go any further. But I think I'd like it to wrap. First child of the holder. Okay, and if we're going left, and we. Uh, if we're going left and we hit the beginning and we try to find the previous sibling of the first one, we won't get anything. So instead, we're going to wrap to last child. Is last child a command? It's got to be a command. I must have used it a billion times. Yes. Okay. Just sanity checking myself. Okay. And in both of these cases, a update needs to happen need update. You know, this will probably work perfectly fine if we didn't even bother with this need update variable and just run this move slice to screen position command every single tick. Um, 
and it would not cause a problem because if it's moving to where it already is, that doesn't really break anything. But I kind of like, I feel like this is cleaner. Plus we can do something like uh, play sound. Do I even have any sounds imported? I'm pretty sure I don't. Uh, let's see, import sound effects. Uh, import sound. Import, where's our lovely default sound? <laughs> not that one. Oh, definitely not that one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, we got some like select. Oh yeah, here we go. Select 8-bit. Okay. Select 8-bit. Oh, I've got an empty one. I don't care about that. Play sound. SFX select 8 bit. I think if I remember correctly, dashes get excluded from these code names. Um, okay, so now it should make a sound each time we, we move. And of course, now we have a good reason for need update to exist because um, we don't want the sound to play over and over again. Oh yeah, if need update is true, then at the end we want to go need update equals false, <clears throat> excuse me. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's re-import, import. Uh, scripts are modified, but are in use and can't be reloaded. Yeah, it's okay. Oop. I'm just gonna start that over. S game. I thought I changed that sprite. Maps. Uh, edit local NPCs. I guess I didn't. Uh, picture. There we go. Okay. I like that. There we go. Okay. Now our hero and our NPC are different. Okay. I'm pushing the arrow keys right now. Okay. If I go past the end, it zooms back to the other side. If we go backwards, it goes like that. Oh, you know, the size of this didn't exactly match with the uh, sprites. Uh, we can easily, when we do the update, we could do set size width cursor, slice width of scale. Ooh, now we can do a cool thing that I hadn't really thought of before. We could have a big sprite in here too. Uh, 50 by 50. Uh, 50 by 50. Let's see. Oh, let's get this thin rare wool. Uh, save image as. Okay. All right. Let's close all of that. Back in there. Medium in graphics. Import. Here we go. And pick the first empty palette. Okay. Go back to our slice collection. Let's make our choice holder a little bit bigger. Boop, 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 boop. Move it over a little because I want to do that. Move that. Oop, I want to move that a little closer to our ghost because I like that also. 
copy and paste the last one. Sprite settings, uh, medium enemy. There we go. Let's move it over. Okay, now we got different sizes. Save and continue. Uh, Re import test game. Okay. All right, now the, uh, the size of the cursor, <laughs> the size of the cursor kind of magically jumps to match the size of the thing we have selected. We could also animate that, I mean, if we wanted, I, if we wanted to get fancy. I don't want to do that, though. I just want to have it work. OK, so we, now we have the, the arrow keys working. Up and down don't do anything, but you know, like if we had two rows, you could do stuff with up and down, you know, maybe, um, maybe you'd want to say like there's six in this row and six in the next row. So pushing up or down would like uh, add plus six or, or do minus, minus six. Um, there you, there's other ways you could handle that. But um, <clears throat> like you could even, um, you could even Anyway, <laughs> there's so many different ways you could do it. This, but this is a nice simple. This is a nice simple way, so I like it. And then the last thing we want to do is, if you actually select one of these, we want to get that back as a result. Um, okay, I'm gonna. Oh my. Uh, my um, thing to prevent the menu from popping up didn't work. No, we're just going to do something simpler and lazier. <laughs> Wait three. That'll probably work. Uh, we'll go second. Wait a quarter of a second. One quarter of a second. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so our last little bit of uh, input, we want to say if key press use key, then now we want to return a value uh, down here. So um, we can set the return value with the return command, but I find that is potentially confusing. So rather than that, we're going to do, we're going to do it with the, we're going to do it explicitly with a variable result. So the very last thing we do is exit with the result. I'm going to create the um, result up here. Variable result. result. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say that if you press cancel, we want to return negative one. Result negative one. Okay. And if you press the use key, we want to return the index number of these. Uh, we want this to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be the return value. And then, you know, some other script could take that return value and make use of it. Um, or you could choose to put it in a global variable um, if you wanted to, uh, which would make it easier to access from some other script without having to pass it around as a, as a return variable. Uh, okay, so I don't remember the name of this command. I think it's, uh, I'm looking for the index of a slice relative to its parent uh, or, or the, the index within its list of siblings. Um, slice child. There it is, slice child index. OK, yes. So slice child index of, sorry, <laughs> of SL. OK, so 
yeah, that does what I want it to do. It'll give me a zero through a five, depending on which one we currently have selected. We want to break out of the loop. Um, we could play another sound there if we wanted to, a confirmation sound or something. Uh, OK. So then that value gets returned. Nothing happens to that value. It just gets returned and then thrown away. I'll change that also in just a moment. And that's the last thing I'll do because I got to wrap this up. Okay. Import this thing. Okay. Run over there and test it. Okay, we're going to pick that. Oh, I've got. What if I do it real quick? No, it's just jumping right back in. I have a bug. Um, break. That should break out of the while loop. That should break out of the while loop. That should take us down here. Um, hmm. Is that what's wrong? Choose the skull. <laughs> okay, that works. And if I press escape and cancel, that works. Okay. Right. It, putting a, a little delay doesn't make sense if I do it before I've turned the player controls back on. Okay, so the last little thing I want to do is I actually want to make this um, wrap this inside another script so we can see the return value. So we could say, um, Plot script, I don't know, my event with my event with a choice end. And then we're gonna have the global variable. Uh, global variable global variable one is my choice. Okay, here we could say my choice equals choose event and then show text box. Let me make a text box real quick. Um, okay, text box number one, the text. You chose number V. We used uh, the ID number of this global variable is one. You chose that number. Okay. So text box one. Wait for text. to re-import that. Then I'm going to go back to my map and my NPC. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put that NPC a little closer to the corner so we can get to them quicker. OK. And then instead of choose a thing, my event with a choice. That's the one we're going to run from the NPC. Um, okay, we moved up there. All right, and we choose the pig. You chose number three. You choose number five. If I press escape, you choose number negative one. All right, so we have a choice box that we can use 
as a um, use it like a scripting command. You chose number two. Okay, and that's it. And I will um, I'll attach this script um, when I post this. All right. Bye bye. Where's the button? Okay. Now bye bye.